not a game, it's a rich thing. The lost legacy of the non-human pharaohs, who were the giants of ancient Egypt? There was a race of giants in ancient Egypt. They were involved in the creation of the pyramids. How did humans move blocks of tons of weight when building the pyramids? That and other questions have led us to question the existence of giants in ancient Egypt. But is there really any conclusive evidence to prove these extraordinary claims? History has repeatedly led us think that the rulers of ancient Kemet ancient name for Egypt, which means the Black Land were not ordinary humans. Some say them elongated skulls, others describe them as quasi-spiritual beings and others as giants of ancient Egypt. And to support this theory is one of the legends that tells how the pyramids of Giza were built at the hands of a race of giants. This theory was shared during a lecture called Atlantis and the Ancient Gods by the occultist and Freemason, Manly P. Hall. We are told that in the year 820 AD, way back in the days of the glory of Baghdad, the great Sultan, the follower and descendant of the great Al Rashid of Arabian Nights, the Sultan Al Rashid Al Mamun decided to open the Great Pyramid. He had been told that it had been built by giants, who were called the Shedite superhuman beings. And that within that pyramid and those pyramids, they had stored a great treasure beyond the knowledge of man. Although it is true that in the year 832 AD, Al Mamun traveled to Egypt and was the first to explore the Great Pyramid in a time where it was still covered in white limestone, however, who the Shedai are is a mystery that continues to this present day. According to some, it could be referring to another name of the Shemsu Hur, or followers of Horus. While others say, it could refer to Shaddad bin Ad King of Ad, who was believed to be the king of the lost Arabian city of Aram of the Pillars, an account of which is mentioned in Surah 89 of the Quran. He is sometimes referred to as a giant. The Akbar al-Zaman, also known as the Book of Wonders, ca. 900-1100, at, is an Arabic compilation of ancient traditions in Egypt and the Predaluvian world. It claims that the people of Ad were giants, so Shaddad could be one of them. It is said that he built the monuments of Dashuvr with the stones that had been carved in the time of his father. Before that, the giant Harjit had begun its construction. At a later date, Kafharim, another giant, placed secrets in the pyramids of Dashur and other pyramids to imitate what had been done of old. He founded the city of Dendera. Dashur consists of the Red Pyramid and Bent Pyramid constructed during the reign of Pharaoh Sneferu BC. On the other side, Dendra consists of highly decorated pillars dedicated to the goddess Heather. The text also mentions that the city of Memphis was built by a group of giants who lived after the Great Flood and served King Misraim, who is also known as a giant. Even later still it describes the work of more of these colossi. Adam was a giant, with insurmountable strength, and the greatest of men. He ordered the quarrying of rocks and their transportation to build pyramids, as had been done in former times. So what do we make of these stories? It does seem that Manly P. Hall was aware of this text and attempted to summarize it in his lecture. It is the opinion of the author that all ancient lore is worth acknowledging as many of these traditions were relied on it to carry knowledge and wisdom through the generations. The followers of Horus, who may have created the main mound of Giza long before the pharaohs are believed to be giants. This is believed because at the end of the 4th millennium BC, those called disciples of Horus were a powerful aristocracy that ruled Egypt. Towards the end of the IV millennium BC the people known as the disciples of Horus appear as a highly dominant aristocracy that governed entire Egypt. The theory of the existence of this race is supported by the discovery in the pre-dynastic tombs in the northern part of Higher Egypt of the anatomical remains of individuals with bigger skulls and builds than the native population. With so much difference to exclude any hypothetical common racial strain, the theory about its existence is supported by the discovery of pre-dynastic tombs north of Upper Egypt. From the remains, archaeologists found skulls and constructions much larger than the rest stand out. 
the difference is such that any kind of common racial strain is ruled out. In fact, Professor Walter B. Emery, an Egyptologist who explored Saqqara in the 1930s discovered the pre-dynastic remains. Emery discovered that the abnormally large remains belonged to people with blonde hair and a much more robust complexion. He said that the strain was not native to Egypt, but that it was very important in Egypt's government. He discovered that this group only mixed with other equally important aristocracies and were believed to be part of the followers of Horus. Kasekimu was the last ruler of the second dynasty of Egypt, with its epicenter near Abydos. He was present in the construction of Hierakonpolis, the pre-dynastic capital. He was buried in the necropolis of Umm el Kab. His limestone tomb was investigated in 2001, surprising experts by the quality of the construction compared to the Step Pyramid of Djoser at Saqqara, which was dated to the beginning of the Third Dynasty. Kasekimui's remains were never found, so it is believed that it was looted long before. Flinders Petrie who was the first to excavate the site, found evidence from the 3rd century BC that the pharaoh almost reached 2.5 meters in height. The 3rd dynasty was responsible for the construction of the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, built with other temples in the complex. Djoser, who was in charge of burying Kasekimu, who is suspected of being his son, ruled Saqqara during the construction of the pyramid. Within this complex, it was possible to photograph a painting of a giant that clearly seemed to have an elongated skull. However, this could be a representation of skeletons that were excavated in the 1930s of individuals with large skulls and complexions. In 1895 and 1896, the world's newspapers published a strange story about a photograph of the Temple of Isis. The first time the article appeared was in the Arizona Silver Belt, November 16, 1895. Under the headline, Prehistoric Egyptian Giants, the article read the following, in 1881, when Professor Timmerman was engaged in exploring the ruins of an ancient temple of Isis on the banks of the Nile, 16 miles below Najar de Jaffer. He opened a row of tombs in which some prehistoric race of giants had been buried the smallest skeleton out of some 60-odd, which were examined during the time Timmerman was excavating at Najar de Jaffard, measured 7 feet and 8 inches in length and the largest 11 feet 1 inch. Memorial tablets were discovered in great numbers but there was no record that even hinted that they were in the memory of men of extraordinary size. It is believed that the tombs date back to the year 1043 BC. According to the German newspaper Bild.de, Gregor Spori, a millionaire who owns a Swiss nightclub, took several photos of a mummified giant finger in the late 1980s. The owner was a retired grave robber who lived in Beerhooker, near Sadat City, about 100 kilometers from Cairo. The finger was 35 centimeters long, so it belonged to someone who easily exceeded 4 meters in height. However, this finding was barely made public in 2012, 24 years later and, since then, it has not been made official. According to Spori, the finger was found 150 years ago and had been in the family of the owner, who took the trouble to x-ray the finger to confirm its authenticity. Read this article to know more about the Egyptian giant mummified finger. According to some researchers, gigantic coffins are proof of giants in Egypt though it simply could be the case that they made them bigger than required to impress others or to make it clear to the gods in the afterlife that they were of royal stock. On the other hand, there are few accounts of gigantism in the historical record, Egypt has too. Many unusually large skeletons and mummies could be just an example of gigantism. But many have thrown questions as being without signs of any pituitary irregularity conclusion anyway, with these discoveries presented in this article. It simply builds the case for the existence of giants in prehistoric Egypt and around the world, and the more we explore the records of each country, the more examples we find. Yes, some have nothing to do with the mysterious lost part of our history, but some have. 
It may even shed light on how such large stones were quarried and lifted into place as only giants. Very advanced technology, or ingenious architects could have achieved such a gargantuan task in the distant past. Blank, underscore, blank, this article was first published on Codigo Oculto, com in Spanish. It's been translated in English and republished here with proper consent. Be respectful to the original copyright owner.